Authentication is one of the common features needed when building out applications, yet the process of adding this can be quite time consuming and challenging to go ahead and implement on your own. Well, luckily it doesn't have to be with a new authentication service called Kind. Kind is a user-friendly authentication service designed for developers to go ahead and accelerate your application development. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get set up with Kind in a Nuxter application using the new Nux Kind module. So let's get started. Now, before we jump in, if you are looking to improve your coding skills, then be sure to check out a platform that I've been working on called Web Dev Daily. It's a free platform that offers daily design to code challenges to complete directly in an innovative VS Code-like browser IDE. Each day, a new Figma design is provided, putting you in the shoes of a professional developer so you can take your skills to the next level. In addition, as you improve your coding skills by completing these challenges, you'll also be building up a portfolio to showcase your work, and you can also learn from others completing the challenges. So if you're interested, be sure to click on the link down below in the description to sign up for your free account. All right, so here on Kind, the first thing we'll want to do if you haven't done so already is create an account, which is free to do. You can either sign up with Google, GitHub, or you can just opt to use your email. Now to keep it simple for this demonstration, I'm just gonna opt to use GitHub. Once you select this, it's going to request authorization, which we're going to allow, and then we should get redirected back over to Kind. To continue creating our account, we're going to want to fill in the business or project details. I'm going to opt to use an application I'm working on called Web Dev Daily, and as you fill out the business name, it'll also auto-populate the domain for you as well. Then we're going to want to select the region, which for me, I'll choose on Oregon, and then we'll select Next. Once that processes, we'll have the ability to start a project from scratch, or if you have an existing project, you can start that process here. And for this example, we're just going to start a project from scratch. Next, we can choose a tech that we want to use Kind with. As you can see, they have a lot of different options to choose from. And for this example, as I mentioned, we're going to be using Nux3 and the new Nux Kind module. Now lastly, we just want to choose the methods of how we want our users to authenticate. Kind provides a handful of different methods, but for this example, we're just going to leave selected email and then also select on Google. Alright, so essentially we now have our Kind project set up. What we need to do next is integrate Kind with a Nux3 application. So you can either do this manually or we can use the Nux Kind starter kit, which is what we're going to do to keep things simple. So let's select on use a kit and then this should direct us to our project where we can download that kit. Okay, so I went ahead and downloaded the starter kit and I have it open within VS Code. Now, if you're familiar with Nux3, then this is all going to look quite familiar to you. Now, here inside of our package.json, if we open this up, it's going to look quite similar to as if you were to create a brand new Nux3 project. However, we also have the Nux kind module automatically installed for us. And if we head over to our Nux config, you can see that we already have this defined within our modules array. Now we also have an env file that is labeled .env.example so that way it can be included with the starter kit. So what we want to do is we want to rename this to just be .env and we want to remove this .example portion. And this is going to contain all the environment variables that we need to configure in order to successfully hook up our kind project to this Nux application. And we also have a few boilerplate templates configured. So within our app.view file, we can see we have uh, just some boilerplate documentation for the starter kit. And we'll kind of go over this in just a moment. And then we also have a few pages, which is going to be the dashboard. And then also this index.view file. So nothing really crazy here, just your basic starter kit. But it's going to give you a really good entry point into configuring Kind into a Nux3 application. All right, so I went ahead and installed all the packages and have this application running out on local host port 3000. Now, before we can do any sort of authentication, we first need to configure all of our environment variables for our specific project. Now, for these three environment variables that contain local hosts, we're going to leave these as is because that is a current URL that our application is running on now. If your application is running on something other than port 3000, or maybe you have this application deployed, then obviously you're going to want to go ahead and change this out to match the domain that your application is going to be running on. Now here inside of our kind dashboard, you can see we have our application called my Nuxt app, and we're just going to want to select on details for this. And this is going to list out all the details for our project. So for example, we have some basic information. If we wanted to change the name of our project or update the framework, we can, you know, choose from a list of different options here. And what we want in our case is going to be these app keys. So we have one for the domain, the client ID and the client secret. 
and we also have our callback URLs. Now, we're not going to be modifying these because, as I mentioned, our application is already running on localhost port 3000, but if you did have it on a different port or maybe you have your application deployed to Vercel, you would just add those URLs here. Now for our app keys, what we want to do is we can just select on copy. So this is going to be for our domain and back here inside of our ENV file, you can see the first one is going to be for that domain. So we can just uh, remove this whole entire thing and then just paste that in. So now we have our configured domain from kind. So we can just save that. Next, we want to grab the ID and also the secrets. So that's going to be the client ID. So we'll copy this and then we'll paste it in here like this. And lastly, we just wanna grab our client secret, so we'll copy this as well, and then we'll paste that in here, and then we'll save it. And I do believe we're gonna to have to restart our development server for this to take effect, so let's do that. And now that we have our environment variables updated and our server restarted, we should now actually be able to authenticate with Kind. So if we head back over to our application, what we can do is head back over to our local host port 3000, and you can see here we have buttons within the starter kit for the sign in and sign up. Now, we don't have an account just yet. So if we click on sign up, this is actually going to take us to Kine and it's going to allow us to register for an account with our Kine project. Now, before we go ahead and register and authenticate using Kine, I want to quickly show you or explain how exactly this works. So as you can see within our app.view, we have these two links, one for signing in and then one for signing up. Now, both of these links are using what are called server routes that are provided to us by Kind. So although we have a server folder here, we're actually not going to see these routes as they are provided to us by the Kind Nux module. So for the sign in, we're hitting the route of API slash login. And for the sign up, we're hitting the route of API slash register. And what this is doing is actually redirecting you to Kind based on your environment variable that you have defined for this Nux Kind auth domain to either go ahead and sign in or register for an account within your Kind project. And if you look here inside of our browser, you can see that the URL that we're being redirected to is the domain that we provided within our environment variable. And this is what makes Kind so good because as a developer, it allows us to focus on the more important stuff within our applications and lets Kind handle everything when it comes to authentication. And I'll also be showing you later on within this video how you're able to go ahead and customize the pages provided to us by Kind, such as this register page. All right, so now that you have a basic understanding of how Kind works, let's go ahead and create a brand new account here within our project. And to do so, we're just going to continue with Google. And there we go, just like that, as you can see, we're able to go ahead and create a brand new account within our Kind project. So once we were signed up, we are then redirected back here to our application on port 3000, and then we are taken to the dashboard route. And you can see that we're logged in now because we have the avatar from our Google account being displayed here within the application from the starter kit. And then we also have our first and last name that is associated with the Google account as well. And here inside of our kind dashboard, if we select on users, we can now see the user that we just went ahead and signed up with as well. Now back here inside of the Nuxt application, as you can see right beneath my name, we have the ability to go ahead and log out of our account. And this is going to work very similar to how we either signed in or signed up. So if we take a look at the code back within the starter kit, as you can see, we have a Nuxt link for this as well. And again, it's going to be using what is called a server route, but this time it is on the path of slash API slash logout. And again, this is provided to us by the kind Nuxt module. Now, once you're signed in with Kind, thanks to the Nux Kind module, we get access to this auth property, which gives us information about the current logged in user. And as you can see, this information is being used here within the starter kit to go ahead and output certain things from that specific user who is logged in. Now, if you want to see all the information that gets returned for the current logged in user, we can do so using the Nux Dev Tools. So here inside of our application, we can click on the Nux logo to open up our Nux Dev Tools. Then we want to go to the payload. And as you can see here, we have keyed state from use state. And here we're going to have this auth property. And if we expand this, we can see that we have the auth uh, object that's being returned. So we have a property for logged in. And then we also have the user property, which contains all the information for the current user. Now here inside of our script tag, if you want to access the auth property, we actually need to obtain it using the use state composable. We don't have access to it like we do here inside of our template where we can just say dollar sign auth and then the property that we want. So to do this, we're gonna create a new variable and we'll just call this auth and then we'll set this equal to the use state composable. 
And then within here, we just want to pass the value of auth because that is a name that is given by the Nux kind module. And then what we can do is simply just say console.log and we'll say auth.value like this. And if, so if we save this, since I'm using a extension called console ninja, you can see here that it's actually being logged out. And if we open up the actual side panel, we can see all the same information that we've seen within the Nux dev tools. But now not only do we have access to this auth property within our template, but we can now use it within our script tag as well. Now, another thing that the Nuxkind module provides is some custom middleware for protecting pages that we only want authenticated users to go ahead and see. So here in the starter kit, for example, on the dashboard page, you can see that within our defined page meta composable, we have some middleware being defined, which is the auth logged in uh, middleware. And this is provided to us by the NUC kind module. And what this is going to do is it's going to check to make sure that our user is currently logged in before we go ahead and navigate to this page. So if we head back over to the application, as you can see, we can close our NUC dev tool. So currently we're on the dashboard route and we're allowed to be here because we're currently logged in. However, if we log out here, and then we try to navigate to this route. So we'll say slash dashboard. And as you can see, we're going to get a 401 status code and it's going to tell us that you must be logged in to go ahead and access this page. Now, even though Kind does handle the appearance of the authentication, we still have the ability to update the design as well as certain values for the following pages, such as this sign in page here. So how we can do this is we head back over to our Kind dashboard and we want to select on the design tab. And in here, we have the ability to do several different things. We can make some global changes to our brand defaults. We can update some of our pages and we can also mess with the emails and the widgets. So for example, let's make some global changes here. So if we wanted to, we can upload a logo for our project. We can change the page's background color. So let's just make this like maybe F1, 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 more like a smoky white. We can change the border radius on our cards and so on and so forth. So let's just save this change here. Now let's go ahead and make a change to our sign in page. So we'll select on it here and you can see that our page's background color was also already updated. So if we select on edit, you can see we have the ability to do several different things. So if you wanted to upload a background image for this, we could do that. We can change the layout here and we can also change the content that we're seeing as well. So as you can see right here, the title text says, hey friend, welcome back. Maybe we can just change this to uh, something like welcome to our app like this. And if we save it, we are gonna see that change here. And now if we go back to our application and we do a refresh, we should now see those changes that we made to our design here inside of our application. So even though Kind does handle by default all the styling for our authentication, they do provide us some really nice tools and a great UI to go ahead and customize it to fit the needs of our specific project. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for this introduction to Kind and Nux3. Overall, I think Kind did a really great job building this product and making it really simple to go ahead and integrate into an application as it really only took a few minutes to do so. Definitely let me know what your thoughts are down below on Kind and if you'd wanna see more projects using this new service. But anyways, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.